another Independence Day. One nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. I recited the national anthem and the pledge daily for six years. I was in primary school. Some of us just recited, crammed and recited. We never understood the import of the powerful words we mouthed daily. Years later, many of us still do not understand. It is that time of the year again, October. We will reminisce about the good old days and the not so good one. Some will look back with nostalgia, some with regrets. But at the end of it all, we will move on till it is another October. The nation has been bereft of freedom, peace, and unity. Many of us fear to move freely even within our comfort zone. Mine is Lagos. We fear being kidnapped. We fear being mugged even on open roads. An avid rec recreational bicyclist, Afolabi Magbogunje, I will say his name, Afolabi Magbogunje, died from stab wounds from robbers who only took his phone where he was waiting for his riding bodies. It could have been me. Riding is one of those joys I wish to indulge in till my body resists. How Apolabi did not make it is a story for another day, despite the fact that he rode several kilometers to seek medical help. We are quick to blame everyone but ourselves for the decay we have in Nigeria. We are quick to line up behind political figures who had no corporate value but promote personal and sectional ideas. But we can have peace. We can have unity. We can have it all when a few of us inculcate the right spirit. Stella Adadevo put her life on the line for public health. Some of our colleagues barely escaped with theirs, so others can live. Many dead medical doctors in public hospitals are carrying the burden of the cost of medical expenses of indigent patients. Imagine if more of us have these kinds of dispositions. A Nigerian cab driver in the US identified as Adekunle returned $700 that was forgotten by a passenger in his car. Ola Yinka Adeniyi a cab operator under the Airport Carrier Association of Nigeria, Lagos, also returned $2,400 and an international passport that was forgotten by a passenger. We should strive for the resilience of the flying goods of the Daman Miracle fame. The match created a footballing record as Nigeria became the first team to come back from four goals down to equalize and then go on to win a FIFA World Cup match at any level. Or the Atlanta 96 team that beat two football superpowers to win Nigeria an Olympic, Olympic gold. At these times, our drive should come from the positives we have as a people. More of us need to decide to take positive steps to rebuild Nigeria from the ground up, since it has become difficult otherwise. Line up when you should. Respect others' time. Respect others' rights to their ideas within the confines of the law. Hold public officials accountable. Educate fellow voters. And perform your civic rights. Maybe one day, one nation will be bound in freedom, peace, and unity. And it will mean more than the lyrics of a song. I really love your, 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 your thoughts, uh, Omone, 
because um, it really got emotional for me at some point, you know, talking about freedom, peace, and unity. And when you really look at it, it so it was even as if like we knew when I was sharing my thoughts, I didn't know what you were sharing, mm. you know, but that national pledge has a lot that can change our country. Talk about freedom of, you talk about, you spoke about movement, you spoke about unity, you spoke about, about peace. When these three things are in place, but today we can't find them. We find out that most of the times Nigeria has recorded the best of results were periods when these three things were in sync. When we were free to do everything we can do as one, one nation, when we were very peaceful, we respected our diversity, we appreciated our, our diversity, our uniqueness, and we embraced our differences, we were able to respect our differences, we have done remarkably well. But today, when somebody approaches you, the first thing that happens subconsciously is that imagining where he's from. If you don't imagine where he's from, his place of origin, you're already imagining what's his church. And so when you are asking this thing in your mind, even without saying it, you are already breaking that code of that aspect of unity. Because somewhere something is being broken. Okay, it's not, it's from church A, this person is from church B. You start, uh, you know, questioning the differences, the ethics, the, the regulations, the dogmas. And you, you start disagreeing with even any other thing that he's doing because he's from this sect. So I really think that this is very, very powerful. We really need to go back to the basics, like I said. Freedom, we must have to start thinking about this. And peace, our unity, must have to be at the crux of the matter. Well, for me, I would say, I quite agree with you, Raymond. No, the concept of Nigeria, our corporate existence of, as Nigeria, or as Nigerians, is more important by tribal and ethnic affiliation. Now, the peace and unity is not just a, a, an abstract ideology. It's something that is practicable. There are steps mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. take as a people on in our side because it's not it's not everything we blame the government on. Yeah, yeah the government yes they have a part to play for yeah. policy and uh, enactment of some certain yeah. rules and maybe um, trying to hold institutions and individuals yeah. accountable mm -hmm. by enforcing laws. But as pe as a people we yeah. we should see ourselves that everybody is a leader in a sense. Do something to inspire other persons. Mm. Do the right thing. Number one, there are, there are things we need to do, strategies we need to imbibe as a people. I'm not even talking about government yeah. now. We should be more inclusive with whatever we do. Mm. Let me give you a very practical example. The, I, I know of, I heard of somebody that said, um, she, I will not mention the particular tribe. Yeah. He said, he, he's a landlady. If she wants to rent her house, or she doesn't like renting her house so to this, uh, this type of tribe. Mm. Mm. Why? Because she thinks that these people are troublemakers mm. or she's not sure of how they will make their money or something. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be. You yeah. should not be having prejudicial and that's the prejudice, statements yeah. and all those things. Do your things. Be inclusive. You should be more interested in somebody, what the person can offer you mm. as an individual in terms of business and also as a collective um, uh, coexistence as Nigerians than who the person is in terms of where he's coming from, yeah. his tribal affiliation or his religion. Don't care about that. But, yeah. but, but, but there was something, Raymond, that um, brought up earlier and which is about... Uh, our perspective, our mindset. Yeah. Uh, you see, the person that does that, that says, I'm not going to give someone from Nigeria Delta a yeah. house or whatever. You also find that that person is also very likely to say, I'm not going to give a Christian a yeah. house. Exactly. And also very likely to <laughs> say, I'm not going to give a, a woman yeah. a house. Yeah. They so, say that. Also. So, so, some of these things comes from the kind of mind. Mm. Right, it, it, there's a kind of mindset that does not allow you to look beyond the box. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of something. If you get into trouble in the UK, if someone gets into trouble in the UK, you're probably not going to tell the policeman that, ah, you know, you're my brother. Yeah. <laughs> but in Nigeria, if you just think that the uh, law enforcement officer speaks your language, it, yeah, you will yeah. try to get favorite. Could switch, switch to the, the language. language. Now, now <laughs> it, it, it's because. Um, we, are, we find it easy to play the ethnic cards, mm -hmm. both sides, and then also because um, even the law enforcer himself is not just. Mm -hmm. And now what I mean by being just, I catch someone, that person has done something, is wrong, and I'm not saying, okay, go. It's your first time, mm -hmm. or it's the morning, go. Uh, I'm not looking at where you're from or anything. Mm -hmm. But that is what you don't find you probably will not find in other climes yeah. where 
uh, what people do is based on their what well, they're looking at are you are you from this place are you, are you not from this place uh, and in places where there are racial issues mm -hmm. they you know that they are very clear racial, racial issues mm -hmm. like um, like what happens in the US mm -hmm. you know that there are very clear racial issues but in our own case you know it's it's, it's killing it, it, it's killing because hey we look at like it's not obvious you can't say oh this guy yeah. It's invisible. We don't get yeah. to make them obvious. Just like what a uh, fella Nikolakbo said some years back, fella, he said something that if in as in South Africa at that time, at some point we talk about apartheid, the whites hitting black. Mm. What will you say about you hitting your brother? Yeah, you, know, uh, it, it, you, know, you know, there is something that uh, Omoni said that yeah. I really want to emphasize. I've always been of the opinion that corruption is not the problem of Nigeria. Okay. I can say that anyway. I think if you ask me what is the problem of Nigeria, I will simply say that there are no consequences for actions. Mm. There are no consequences for actions. Because corruption is very, very relative. I mean, what is corruption? Are you pointing at the teacher in the classroom that is not standing up to teach the students with all her heart? Are you pointing at the, the employee employer that is not paying their, the worker salary as at when due? You know, are you pointing at the, the, the security man at the gate who can't allow you to pass because you don't look like you're going to give him money? Are you pointing at the staff that is hiding someone's file because they're not giving you? So I think that there are no consequences for action in Nigeria. And when I mean consequences, I'm not just talking about even people doing bad things. I also mean people doing good things. Mm. Because here we don't celebrate people for the good things that they are doing. Most of the Nigerians that get to be celebrated find out it's because a foreign eye is beginning to point on them. Or maybe a foreign eye has taken them out and celebrating yeah. them heavily for the little things that you are doing. Then our people start rushing. Is our child? Is our this? Is, is our dad? <laughs> the same thing with bad, um, the negative aspect. Can we get to a point where people are punished outrightly without looking at your face, without looking at who could be your father? You know, I had an experience in a particular country that I went to, and uh, while at the airport, I saw someone who from a country, and uh, the person made an off offense that here I could have just slide and that was the person tried to boycott covid protocols and they caught the person at the airport outrightly fined the person three thousand dollars wow just trying to boycott and there was no jupiter that could reverse that the person paid wow yes the person paid three thousand dollars the person was going to face five years in jail wow so if you could you are going to pay five thousand five thousand dollars three thousand dollars for doing that after paying it, I'm very sure, even inside her room, she will never think of boycotting any process. And so we have to come to a point here in Nigeria where people are punished outrightly. But here we have laws. But how many of them have been enforced? How many of the politicians have been sent to jail? They just come out and they make caricature of us. And so back to what we are also saying, we must come to that point for, 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 there to, for us to achieve freedom. We must get to a point where people who are you know, defaulting in the rules, in the laws that have been set, are being punished. Because it is only then that the rest of the society, the rest of the society, will begin to align with an already existing rule. And so we can achieve freedom. You know that if you are going on the road and you assault somebody, you harass someone, there is a system that has seen what you have done. You know that if you jump the traffic, if you jump the traffic or you drink drive, nobody will beat you. But by the time you get to somewhere, somebody comes and gives you a ticket. And you have to pay or you don't drive. If these things don't happen, we can't talk everything about freedom because people are just going about doing anything because nobody's catching them. We can't talk about unity because right now we already just mentioned about the things that divide us, the divide us more than connect us together. Even in an age where technology is connecting people, we still find these tiny, 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 tiny divides, you know, around this whole area when even knowledge is global right now. You still want to check if this person is your brother before you teach him. Is this person from this place before I can teach him? Is this person from my church before I can teach him? It's no longer about the result, but about who is involved. So I really think that we have to really achieve this. And the issue of peace, like Felix rightly pointed out, has to be a collective effort. Peace has to be a collective effort. Can we really start looking out for our neighbors, even right where we are? We need to start getting accountable. And it starts with ensuring that our individual goals does not affect the peace and the progress of the next person. If that doesn't happen, then you're not accountable. And so mm. everywhere, we start having randomness everywhere. 
and things will begin to get complex. Well, what you said, actually, your right ends where the other person's right begins. If you talk about peace, like we said, we have to be practical by inclusion. Then we should also embrace the fact that we as a people, we are diverse in our views, our ideas, our cultures, our religion. But we should embrace the collective corporate nature of, a, of an existence Nigeria where everybody can benefit and aspire to be anything. Now that brings me to this issue of what happened yesterday. There was a video circulating initially and people were saying, oh, the police shouldn't have attacked this set of individuals because of their religious belief and all this. So, People should be respected. Everybody should have that ownership of Nigeria. No Nigerian is more Nigerian than any other Nigerian. But all pay, everybody can claim to exist together as Nigeria. Actions and consequences. We hope our conversations continue to resonate with you. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The Advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, Hashtag the advocate ng and Instagram at plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts. Go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station, and let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye.